final presenter in this section is Anna Herforth, a senior research associate at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Round of applause for her, please. Thank you. It's so great to be here. I certainly, as a human, I feel very at home uh, in a group of other humans who want to celebrate food diversity. And um, also in this location, in the New York Botanical Garden, like Selena, um, more than 20 years ago, this was the location of the first scientific conference I ever went to, which was the then Society for Economic Botany, now the Society for Ethnobotany. Um, and uh, it's always been an inspirational place as it continues to be. I learned so much already today from all of you. Um, so I'm so pleased to be here at this event. Um, the launch of the PTFI, and also there's a, another launch that I am here to talk about, which is the launch of the World Food Map. And um, the World Food Map, it is uh, launching today. It's, the, uh, it's a, a visual interactive result of the first systematic identification of the most commonly consumed foods um, in countries around the world. So this is a different kind of um, a food atlas or food catalog. It um, complements other work that's been done before, like by Mauricio and Tiziana that uh, you heard about, um, because this arose from really kind of an ethnobotanical uh, interview process where um, my, my team in the Global Diet Quality Project, we did interviews with now it's almost a thousand people around the world who are key informants uh, in up to actually over 130 countries to tell us in each food group, what are the most common foods in that place? And actually this started because we needed to create questionnaires that are being implemented in the Gallup World Poll to measure diet quality. And we needed to know what people consume so that we could ask the right questions. But in this process, what we discovered talking to all of these people that was that by the way, we were, we were creating this atlas of what are the most common foods that everyone is telling us are, are commonly consumed in each place. And it was just so fun to do these interviews. Um, you know, people would give an hour of their time and they keep talking, um, you know, they would just wanna go on about food and learning so much about food culture, like, you know, tell me what you eat in the country and I will understand the history of the country. I'll understand the connection to the land, disconnection from land. I'll understand um, flows of people, flows of trade, in terms of what is common in each place that may not be uh, indigenous as a geographic center of origin, but is now commonly consumed, and then some things that still are uh, indigenous to a, a center of origin. So um, this work, which was uh, you know, supported by the Rockefeller Foundation and done really in collaboration with PTFI, um, huge thanks to Roy and to John de la Parra for, for supporting this. Um, we, we've created this, uh, this map you can go see at worldfoodmap.org. Um, it has a, the, there's a number of food groups here listed. You can sort of hover over the map and see uh, a quick list of um, most commonly consumed foods in each food group. Um, you can also dig into the, the food items. You can search for food items. So this is an example. Um, so you can see here, the countries where cowpea leaves are very common in the diets. And this doesn't mean that these are the only countries where they're grown. We just heard cowpea leaves are grown in the Americas, but um, these are the places where they come up a lot in terms of being important in people's diets. And you can see here another example of okra much more widely spread. Um, and we also have, you know, we're, we're starting to catalog more of the scientific um, information around it, starting, of course, with the botanical families and species and centers of origin, a lot thanks to Colin's work there, um, of cataloging that. Um, but we are, as a next step, linking much more closely with the periodic table of food to draw in the actual composition of these foods so that this will be another entry point into the information PT PTFI is generating so that you see where the foods are common and what's in the foods. Um, so in addition to that next step, we're also, uh, we have a new phase of the project supported by the EU to add a new layer of uh, neglected and underutilized foods 
um, beyond the most common foods that's already here. Um, my colleague Chris Bugliano from Food and Planet will be um, taking a leadership role in this next phase, and he's here as well. And so we're really excited to keep building this resource and being able to understand food diversity in the world uh, by what people eat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. You can stay at the podium if you'd like. Um, I, I want to congratulate everyone on the, this, this food mapping project. It's so exciting. I can't wait to dig in. And something you said, uh, Anna, really struck me, how much fun you had do, doing the interviews across the world. And I think it's a reminder that joy has to be an incredible part of this work or it doesn't, it doesn't happen. So congratulations to you all. We are sadly out of time, um, so we're not going to take uh, questions from the audience, but I hope you will ask the presenters uh, questions during the lunch break. Thank you all so much. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're now going to turn to a conversation. Thank you all again. Round of applause as they exit.